1981 surfaces, puts every anthem protester to shame. Ronald Reagan continues to be a beloved icon of conservatism even 13 years after his death. What endeared the 40th president to so many is that he was unequivocally, unapologetically pro-American. He loved his country and believed it was something worth fighting for. A recording of Reagan's first inaugural address is making rounds on the Internet as the public debates the issue of national anthem protesting NFL players. As seen on YouTube, Reagan's powerful speech declared that the U.S. is exceptional and unique, something to be proud of. He went on to describe the enormous sacrifices so many Americans have made for this nation including their very lives. Reagan assumed the presidency at a time of uncertainty and fear, much like today. His predecessor, Jimmy Carter, was often criticized for his tepid handling of international affairs, particularly his response to the Iran hostage crisis. Carter was also president during a time of high inflation, high interest rates, oil shortages, and slow economic growth. Reagan articulated a powerful point that the talents and innovation of the people themselves, not the government, are what make America great. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem, government is the problem. From time to time we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. Well. If no one among us is capable of governing himself, then who among us has the capacity to govern someone else? Reagan's comments are especially significant in the face of football players who have benefited immensely from America's free market system, gaining a wealth most people on earth will only ever dream about. Reagan believed every American has the full capacity to lift himself up to success if he chooses, as long as the government gets out of his way. The NFL players are evidence of that proposition. Yet these same players repeatedly lament systemic oppression while basking in millions of dollars. But Reagan didn't stop there. Whereas these protesting NFL players see America as a morally corrupt country that is undeserving of their reverence, Reagan said the nation is worth dying for. While these overpaid football players consider themselves heroes for taking a knee during the national anthem, Reagan made it clear who the true heroes are. Those who say that we're in a time when there are not heroes, they just don't know where to look, beyond those monuments to heroism is the Potomac River, and on the far shore the sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery, with its row upon row of simple white markers bearing crosses or stars of David. They add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom, he said. He continued. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Below Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Porkchop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Reagan then told the story of Martin Trepto a young man who fought and died on the Western Front in World War II. In his diary left behind was his pledge, which included the following immortal words. I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure, I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost, as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. That's heroism. It's a lesson the NFL players would do well to learn. Report Benghazi Families Issue Brutal Hillary Demand The Benghazi terrorist attack that resulted in the deaths of Ambassador Christopher Stevens, Tyrone Woods and Sean Smith was the result of negligence. As details of this story from 2012 continued to emerge, the parents of Woods and Smith have a request. These parents want to see Hillary Clinton brought to justice over the deaths of their sons, insisting that she should stand trial. The attack was carried out by a group of Muslim terrorists. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama seemingly knew that the attack was coming, but did nothing to stop it. In fact, they went on to tell the parents that the death of their children was due to an obscure YouTube video, not negligence. A case was brought on by Larry Clayman from Freedom Watch on behalf of the parents, 
Patricia Smith and Charles Woods. The basis of the case was that Clinton not only lied about the attack but went on to defame the families of the victims by accusing them of lying. The charges included defamation, false light, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Shockingly, the case was dismissed at a lower level, citing the behavior as part of Clinton's scope of employment, which happened to be Secretary of State. Even with the likely fact that Clinton used her private, unsecured email service to transmit information that eventually led to the deaths of the Americans in Benghazi, Clayman is having to fight for the overturn of the dismissal. Clinton was previously dismissed on a default judgment by an Obama-appointed judge. The basis for that dismissal was that Clinton was not properly served and therefore could not be brought to court. Clayman went to Washington in order to fight for Smith and Woods. The parents of the two brave Americans said that the FBI determined that Clinton's use of the email server was extremely careless. The lawsuit claims that as a result of the carelessness, their children are no longer on this earth. That, if anything, should at least make Clinton want to show remorse for her behavior. Instead, she accused the parents of lying and neglected all responsibility. The parents also used the grounds that Clinton lied about the cause of the attack. She initially said that a YouTube video showing the Islamic prophet Muhammad getting mocked was what caused the attack. It was later found that this was not the case. Clayman laid the groundwork for his argument, having used a secret private email server that we now know was used to communicate with Ambassador Christopher Stevens with confidential and classified government information, and which we also now know was likely hacked by hostile adversaries such as Iran, Russia, China and North Korea aligning with terrorist groups. It is clear that Hillary Clinton allegedly negligently and recklessly gave up the classified location of the plaintiff's sons. One can hope that this is not going to end here. The hunt for the whole truth and eventual conviction of Clinton is, in the eyes of many Americans who see this crime for what it is, a crucial undertaking. Clayman and many like him are going to continue the fight to get to the bottom of what really happened in Benghazi. At the very least, the parents deserve to hear the truth with their own ears. Epic. Donald Trump Jr. Trolls Nasty Librarian Who Declined First Lady Melania's Racist Seuss Books A Cambridge, Massachusetts librarian rejected a shipment of books from First Lady Melania Trump for the school library. The librarian Liz Phipps Soero said the Dr. Seuss books the First Lady was donating were racist. She is an Obama supporter, as you can see from her library propaganda. A librarian at the Cambridgeport Elementary School in Massachusetts is declining a shipment of books from First Lady Melania Trump. One school from each state was chosen by the White House to receive 10 Dr. Seuss books as part of National Read-A-Book Day, CBS Boston reports. Getting an education is perhaps the most important and wondrous opportunity of your young lives, Trump said in a letter to the children who will be receiving books. The school's librarian, Liz Phipps Soeiro, wrote a lengthy editorial for the Horn Books family reading blog explaining why her school does not need the books. Liz Phipps Soeiro wrote an editorial in the local paper calling Dr. Seuss a racist. Yearly per pupil spending in Cambridge is well over $20,000. Our city's values are such that given a huge range in the socioeconomic status of our residents, we believe that each and every child deserves the best free education possible and are working hard to make that a reality. Most classrooms maintain a 60-40 split between free, reduced lunch and paid lunch. This offers our Title I school and the district a lot of privilege and room for programming and pedagogy to foster high standards of excellence. Even so, we still struggle to close the achievement gap, retain teachers of color, and dismantle the systemic white supremacy in our institution. But hell, we test well. And in the end, it appears that data, and not children, are what matters. Another fact that many people are unaware of is that Dr. Seuss's illustrations are steeped in racist propaganda, caricatures, and harmful stereotypes.
open one of his books, if I ran a zoo or and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, for example, and you'll see the racist mockery in his art. It turns out that this liberal miscreant only think Dr. Seuss is racist because First Lady Melania Trump was involved. So Aira was pictured in a cat in the hat outfit just a couple years ago with a huge smile on her face. Typical liberal hypocritical and full of hate. Twitter unleashed on Soero and Donald Trump Jr. decided to jump in and troll the liberal lunatic who attacked First Lady Melania. Don Jr. tweeted over a picture of Soero in a cat in the hat outfit and said, It's almost as if some throw around accusations of racism like a wild card to bolster a stupid argument and score cheap political points. Others piled on as well. Melania shuts down school librarian who spurned book gifts. First Lady Melania Trump released a statement through her communications director in response to a grade school librarian who spurned her gift of free books for the school children. Why did the librarian turn down the gift? In a long screed published earlier this week, elementary school librarian Liz Phipps Soero sneered at the gift from the First Lady, offering a few reasons in explanation. She called the Dr. Seuss books cliched and used the occasion to criticize Education Secretary Betsy DeVoe. She continued on to deride the First Lady for sending books some consider racist and enforcing systemic racism and oppression. How did the First Lady respond? Mrs. Trump intends to use her platform as First Lady to help as many children as she can. She has demonstrated this in both actions and words since her husband took office and sending books to schools across the country is but one example, read the statement from the First Lady's communications director. Turning the gesture of sending young school children books into something divisive is unfortunate, it concluded, but the First Lady remains committed to her efforts on behalf of children everywhere. Why was the First Lady giving books to the school? For National Read-A-Book Day in September, the First Lady chose one school in each state to receive a gift of books written by celebrated author Dr. Seuss. Why does this matter? It doesn't, really. But it is an example of how unreasonable the hatred toward the President and the First Lady can be, even when the First Lady is simply attempting to make a generous gesture to school children. It is another sign of how irrationally divided the country is among political lines. Hillary urged Trump to send help to Puerto Rico. Benghazi hero instantly hits back with scorching response. Hurricane season has been incredibly rough for Puerto Rico this year. First, the island bore the brunt of Hurricane Irma. But the worst was Hurricane Maria, which knocked out electricity across the island. The disaster in Puerto Rico is horrible for the people. In fact, it's so bad officials there have described conditions as apocalyptic, according to CNN. With the situation so dire, former Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton decided to politicize it. What did she do? Clinton fired off the following tweet to President Donald Trump. Benghazi survivor and former Army Ranger Chris Panto saw Clinton's tweet, and he fired back on her asking to send help. Pando tweeted. Mike Lester made a clever cartoon describing the issue within the protests. The national anthem protests rose numerous reactions, among which the audience can witness hypocrisy of the NFL and its supporters among mainstream media regarding this issue. The executive director of the NFL Players Association, DeMoris Smith, this weekend obviously made dumb remarks, made this remarkably clear. No man or woman should ever have to choose a job that forces them to surrender their rights, he stated Saturday, just one day after President Trump made the vulgar statement that the team owner should fire all the players who disrespect the national anthem and protest. We understand that our job as a union is not to win a popularity contest and it comes with a duty to protect the rights of our members, Smith continued. For that, we make no apologies and never will. Entire left including politicians, 
media, and Hollywood agreed with Smith, and supported the NFL concerning this issue, attacking President Trump for allegedly trying to violate NFL players' rights. Mike Lester, a conservative cartoonist, made a clever cartoon but there is only one problem. The liberals criticized one Christian baker who refused to make a cake for gay couples' wedding, but when a billion-dollar NFL and the players who earn millions disrespect the national anthem they are quiet. These multi-million players didn't say anything when a left-leaning activist from Colorado attacked Jack Phillips, a small cake shop owner when he decided five years ago to refuse to make a cake for gay couple wedding. Supposedly statement should not have to surrender their rights only applies for NFL players. But that's not true. It only applies to NFL players who are left-leaning. The Daily Wire reported that when last year the Dallas Cowboys wanted to pay tribute to five officers from Dallas who were murdered at a Black Lives Matter event, the NFL didn't agree. The Cowboys had been wearing a special decal on their helmets that said arm in arm that specifically honored the police officers, that is, until the NFL stepped in and stopped it, the Wire reported. The NFL last year warned to fine a Titans player who wanted to honor the victims of September 11th attacks, by wearing a pair of cleats. Seems like the rights only apply to NFL and players who are anti-cop and anti-American like Colin Kaepernick. Please share this story on Facebook and Twitter and let us know what you think about the glaring hypocrisy of the NFL and its liberal supporters. Please share this post on Facebook with your thoughts. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below.